marriage is to be enjoyed, not endured. Marriage is to be enjoyed, not endured. Good morning. My name is Janice, and I want to talk about enjoying your marriage. It is not to be endured. I am horrified at the number of wives that cry and complain on Facebook in groups, talk about marriage is not for the weak. Uh, I am horrified at the number of naked wives that we have. And you know what I always say, girl, like, uh, why did you marry him? My name is Janice again. Happy Friday. Thank you for your love and support. Thank you for uh, joining my Patreon showing me love with my books and picking up the books and leaving reviews. I really appreciate it. If you are a wife and you are enduring your marriage, I suggest you get you some counseling. I think I post this story in my Patreon. It says marriage isn't for the weak. Lifetime commitment is different when you're going through issues in your marriage and you don't have anyone to talk to, but God, my question to you, uh, is what red flags did you overlook? See, woman, I, I want, I'm gonna write a book about wives taking accountability because 99%, 99% of the issues marriages have were red flags. Where's my pillow? Red flags you were seeing while you were dating, while you were engaged, but you thought you could fix him. You thought you could stop him from cheating. You thought if you work three jobs, you can take care of the family. You, you, you just thought that <clears throat> if you marry this man, you can fix it. And it never works out because after about three months, that's why a lot of date relationship, three months, because right after three months, the clause starts to come out, okay? And so a lot of wives are crying today because you overlook those issues. And what you do not understand, ma'am, is that the issues you overlook are going to be the bombs in your marriages. How, how do you marry a man without not knowing how much he made? Isn't that a part of the decision-making process? Don't you need to know that, that his income in order for you to make a decision if this man is marriage material and then you get married and start crying, you can't pay your mortgage, you can't pay your rent, they're going to take, take back the car, I don't know what I'm going to do. But my thing is, ma'am, how... And so for my ladies that's dating for marriage, this is why I don't give a lot of marriage advice because you guys are not ready for the hard questions I'm going to ask because I'm going to ask, you was having financial issues before you got married. What made you think you were not going to have financial issues after you got married? He was cheating on you before you got married and you knew about it. What makes you think he was not going to cheat on you after you got married. He was beating on you before you got married. So what made you think he was going to stop beating on you after you got married? So I don't even really, really, if somebody emailed me, I'll talk, but I, I don't do videos for, for marriage women because I'm going to be asking those hard questions because those, those are the issues you deal with in your marriage. I, I've only, in all of my time of writing books and encouraging one, I have only met one wife, one wife whose husband was abusing her. They were married 20 years before he started abusing her. And he started abusing her because he, he, he got on drugs. That's different. She said, she said, no, we've been married 20 years. He's never hit me in 20 years, but he started hitting me when he started taking drugs. That's different. But all these issues that a lot of wives are dealing with after you get married are issues you were dealing with before you got married. 
and you should have walked away because what dating is for data. See the video that I did yesterday, how to date like Janice, because once you come up on the issue, ma'am, you need to walk away. And a lot of you say, oh my God, Janice, you were so hard. You walk away because he doesn't use and know how to use a knife and fork. Yeah. Cause I know me that's going to annoy the hell out of me. And, and I'm going to be, uh, uh-uh. um, so I can't, he got five kids. Is he a multimillionaire? You going to marry him and don't think you're going to struggle with a man that got five kids? How do you marry a man that's making minimum wage or a little bit above minimum wage? The average black man in the United States make what? $40,000, $50,000 a year. That's not a lot of money. I was making $50,000 in my 20s. And I'm 44 today. So how do you marry a man with five kids who's making $15.99 an hour and not think you and your kids are going to struggle? And why would you go have babies with a man making minimum wage and have another baby with him and not think you're going to struggle financially? These are the things you think about before you got married. This is why I keep telling you that dating is for data. You do not, you should not, my ladies that's dating for marriage, you should not meet a man and jump all the way in. Absolutely not. You meet a man, you know what you want. Pick up two and three times. Guys, if you don't know, I'm going to be doing a book special for that. You know what you want and you date accordingly. So if you want a provider husband, please tell me, ma'am. Please tell me, ma'am, I post in my community tab. Why would you marry a man that wants you to do 50-50? I don't understand. You, You as a wife, as a woman, cannot make your husband or turn him into a hundred percenter. That is not who he is. He is a 50-50 man. He has 50-50 mentality. So if he has 50-50 mentality and you have 100% mentality, guess what? Y'all don't match. I would have never married my husband if he wanted me to pay 50% of the bills. Never! Neither would I marry a man who has 50-50 mentality and want him to be 100%. That's not who he is. That's not who he is at heart. So y'all be trying to change these men into who you want them to be. And that's not who they are. I posted this. I think I posted my community tab on my Patreon. He said, I just discovered my husband made more than one and a half times as much as I did last year. And he didn't see fit to tell me about it. How you don't know how much your husband made? Huh? This is a significant amount of money. Prior to this, we were earning about the same, but this his circumstances changed last year. I found out because I looked through our tax documents. We have our taxes done with the same person. They were all lumped together. So he doesn't appear to be trying to hide this fact, but he never told me directly. Also, I had very recently spoken with him about our finances and that I am having trouble making ends meet. We split everything 50-50. So you agreed to 50-50. Hi, delusional woman. You agree to 50-50 and now you want to backpedal. No, go ahead and pay 50%. That's what you agreed to. See, y'all signed the contract and now you want to backpedal. No, 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 no. If the contract is not what you want, don't sign it. But it's too late. Because you done been with him for five or six years, begging him to marry you, and now he marry you. And, and so, my ladies that are dating for marriage, whenever you hear, I would always hear the the church woman talk about marriage is not a bed of roses. And you know what? I always I said that's because you didn't marry a man who would make put you lay you in a bed of roses. Marriage is not cookies and cream. Uh, that's because you didn't marry a man that would give you cookies and cream. Marriage is not for the weak. Well, why did you marry him? 
Marriage is not to be endured. Marriage is to be enjoyed. Do not listen to anybody who thinks marriage is supposed to be a struggle. It is not supposed to be a struggle. Marriage in God's intention is supposed to be like Adam and Eve before the fall. But a lot of marriages are Adam and Eve after the fall struggling. Your marriage is not to be endured it is not supposed to be a struggle but if you don't want to endure and you don't want to struggle then you must not marry a man that would cause you to endure your marriage and cause you to struggle do we all go through yes we do however ladies you try to find somebody that you have as much things in common as possible try to find somebody choose ladies choose your husband who you have things impossible as similar as possible if you're born again he should be born again if he's of another even if he's a christian and he if he's of another denomination that your your denomination don't go with don't me i would marry i would never date or marry holiness never because i'm gonna wear my pants and perm my hair if i want to what are your financial goals and financial outlook are they the same are they different do you want a benz but he's gonna buy you the chrysler You want to buy a a, 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 a $12,000 purse and he's saying, baby, no, no, no. Let's put that in savings. And see, when you get married, you start to butt heads because you didn't work all of that out before. Or you didn't choose somebody that you have similar financial goals and outlook. And so you get married and you are enduring. So my ladies, that's dating for marriage. Dating is about data. Do not, do not choose a husband that will cause you to endure your marriage or to struggle in your marriage. You're supposed to have more good days than bad days. If you're having bad days every week, something's wrong. Something is wrong. I'm telling you. I have to go, my beloved. If you don't have uh, the naked wife, pick that up. 23,000 guys you might meet. Date is about marriage. Uh, Date is about data. 10 years ago, I still love you and adore you. Thank you so much. Share this out if you can. Thank you for those of you joining my Patreon. Leave me reviews. I appreciate and joining my YouTube membership. Love you. Bye.